Hello everyone and welcome to Installing Realism Overhaul in KSP.90. I'm going to attempt to install Realism Overhaul in this version of KSP. I'm, I'm not guaranteeing that this is going to end up perfectly. Uh, I've, I've tried it once before and it seems to work out okay but with some quirks. I had to do some fiddling. Here on the left side is a clean install of KSP, KSP Realism Overhaul 090. And uh, the only uh, difference from what you unzip is that I copied my settings file from uh, the stock KSP.90 install. And so that's there. And otherwise, here are the mods. And I'm not going to install all of them right away. I'm going to install mainly the ones that are required. And so if we go to our web browser, we see that in the Realism Overhaul thread we have these dependencies, recommendations, and suggestions. And so we're going to focus first on the dependencies and then hit some of the recommendations that I think are absolutely necessary. And the suggestions might have to wait a little while because of RAM space. So it's going to be 32-bit uh, installation and we're going to see how much we can fit. So, the first thing I want to do is firmware space research. I'm, I'm using WinRAR to unzip things. So, here's game data. And so, we go to game data here. And I just copy and paste out. The reason I did firmware space first is because Advanced Jet Engine is dependent on it. So, I like to install the stuff that is required for other stuff first. So, firmware space before Advanced Jet Engines. And so, this is Advanced Jet Engines. Okay, so that's done. What else is on our list? Whoops. Um, Crossfeed enabler, Kerbal Joint Reinforcement. Crossfeed enabler. Now I'm obviously not showing you how to download these things from the websites. That would take a very long time. So I trust you can navigate that yourself. But here we go, Kerbal Joint Reinforcement. Okay, what's next? Module Manager, already we have in there thanks to Firmware Space Research. Uh, module RCS FX is in Realism Overhaul itself, so we don't have to add that separately, though we, we might as well. I downloaded it. We can let uh, Realism, well, it's probably safer to just let Realism Overhaul install that. Uh, Real Fuels, Real Fuels has to be done. Okay, Real Fuels. And Real Fuels has a tweak scale here, but this is just a tweak scale interaction. Hmm. So how about we install tweak scale first instead of installing real fuels first because it seems like it has some sort of thing with tweak scale. Let's get tweak scale in. Tweak scale is relatively small. You see here 433 kilobytes. So no problem dumping that in first. It won't hurt our RAM much. So now we have real fuels and tweak scale. You notice I'm just keeping the most recent version of module manager here. Okay, and that's that. No overwrites necessary. And the last one that was required was Real Solar System. Real Solar System has custom biomes. Hopefully they updated all the biomes with the new, because we have new biomes in the newest version of KSP. So just these. I've already got Module Manager here, so I don't need to copy it. And it looks like this modified date is older than this one anyway. Okay, off we go. All right, now with real real solar system, we also need the real solar system textures. Okay, you'll find those in the real solar system thread, and there are three kinds: the uh, 2048, the 4096, and the 8192s. And I'm gonna go with the smallest ones first, just to be safe. And it's just into game data like this. All right. So with all that done, the only thing we haven't actually installed is a Realism Overhaul. And so, where in the, this thread is it? Um, it's a good question. Oh, here. Realism Overhaul GitHub release page. That's probably the best place to get it. So get it from there. And Realism Overhaul. 7.0.4 and here you see module RCS FX oh Thunder Aerospace huh right it changes Thunder Aeros uh, TAC Light Support well then let's uh, install TAC Light Support first now in the TAC Light Support thread they have a, 
a temporary fix. It's right at the top of the threads. You pro hopefully can't miss it. Uh, so that uh, you'll go to their, uh, I think it's the GitHub page that has the ten uh, the fix for 0 0.90. And so this is that fix. Okay, tack life support in. And then finally, realism overhaul. Okay, and as you can see, Realism Overhaul is replacing the life support configuration file in TAC Life Support. So I'm going to do that. All right. So that should be all the dependencies. Now I want to uh, quickly hit upon some of the recommendations. The first one, Deadly Reentry, I think, and Engine Igniter. Okay, Deadly Reentry. Engine Igniter. I always check inside the folders to make sure that it's really the mod in there and there isn't some sort of nestled folder uh, messing things up. I'm gonna hold off a MacJeb and that sort of thing. Let's see, Remote Tech. Actually that's a good thing to talk about. Okay, so we have to install Remote Tech. Now you don't have to install Remote Tech, but I'm gonna install Remote Tech despite all my frustrations with it in the past. Okay, there's Remote Tech. And if we take a look at this thread, you might have spotted it the first time I expanded it, but here you see Remote Tech 2 settings file. Get that. You need that. Okay, so uh, I already downloaded that. So if I go back to my folders, I see I have Remote Tech RSS settings. And inside the Remote Tech folder, I'm going to dump that. All right. Now, I think we have all of these and all of the yellowish orange colored ones here. In addition to that, I want procedural fairings, procedural parts and procedural wings and real shoots. And then I think we can fly with that for now. Okay. So, procedural fairings procedural parts procedural wings and then real shoots Some of this stuff might uh, throw up an error at the beginning of KSP, but we'll see if it works anyway. I think uh, Engine Igniter might not be fully updated to 0 .90 yet, but uh, I, I certainly am not going to miss out on it. Now, we have this K uh, Kerbal Attachment System little thing here, and uh, I don't, I'm not using Kerbal Attachment System yet, so I've got to remember to not overwrite that if that's something that gets overwritten. But okay, I think uh, we're all set to go. Yep. Uh, let's let's see how much RAM space this actually takes up without any other tweaks. Okay. Okay, so it's loading up and it asks me whether I want these add-ons to check for updates. Not really. I'll update them myself. I don't like nasty surprises in the middle of recording a series. So. Engine Igniter, as uh, as expected, says unsupported KSP version. We'll see how bad that is when it when the time comes. All right, uh, I'll let this continue loading, and uh, I'll report what the RAM usage is at its peak. Okay, now Real Solar System is doing its thing, and we're at 2.2 gigabytes of RAM. Okay, that's 2.2 uh, gigabytes of RAM. Let's start a game and see if it works out. Default sandbox. I haven't decided whether to use the realistic progression light tech tree yet. I'm gonna have to uh, try that out to see whether I'm comfortable with it in order to make a series with it. Uh, so here's tech life support. We'll have to see whether that works or not. Uh, but let's keep the settings as is. This is 
What are you? You're deadly reentry. Okay. Far. Real shoots. Okay. Um, no unexpected features on the landscape. Let's uh, let's try and build a rocket. We're at 2.3 gigabytes of RAM right now. Okay, got it. Now, one thing you can do is dump the stock fuel tanks because, uh, well, let me just show you. Here's a command pod, and for some reason they never see fit. And you know, I, I guess I can understand with uh, procedural parts and all why why it's the case. But the the stock fuel tanks don't really fit anymore, right? So you might as well dump it. Uh, you can. I don't think there's any problem with deleting those. And again, this doesn't fit quite right either. You could probably get an adapter from the 2 meter that this is to the 2.5 meter that those are. But, uh, well, that's up to you. Uh, let's try and build a very quick rocket to see if all systems are functional. So first, oh, parachutes are a separate category, yay. Um, actually, that doesn't fit right, does it? This needs to be a little bit bigger. Yeah. Um, decoupler. Okay, so let's have a second stage. And what kind of engines do we have? Now we don't have many engines because I didn't install any engine packs. So that's going to be a problem. Hmm. That seems a little bit overpowered. Oh, where did that come from? Huh. Okay, well that's, that's a surprise. Oh, really? Uh, RL10 is a 2.5 meter part? Oh, darn. I was hoping for that one. That's too big now. Maybe I should expand this a little bit. Let's say... Nah, not, not a spoon of cone. Let's just go with a cone. Cone with uh, 2 meters on the top and 2.5 on the bottom. And then we get to put the RL10. And... Let's just go for default and liquid hydrogen 7.7 .7 tons That's not bad We should probably yeah, that that's not bad. Let's change the color though German mm. Let's let's go a little bit more subtle Okay Not bad decouplers. We'll have to see whether the procedural stuff does its thing all right. Fairing base. No, that's that's fairing base. Inner stage. Yeah. And what are you? You're at three meters. No, I want you at 2.5 meters. Okay. This is probably going to go very badly, let me just be clear. I'm doing this very quickly and I'm just seeing whether things are going to work out. I'm not even thinking about building a rocket that actually makes sense. Well, okay. Could use the stock fuel tanks. But let's just go with procedural. And what kind of engines can we put down there? This, I'm, I'm very tempted. This is, well, no, that's a upper stage one. Oh, that's an... LR87 that is uh, using hydrogen. That's very interesting. Okay. Uh, we don't need that though. Oop, that's small now. Well, we can fix that. Two meters, really? Um, it says two meters. It looks smaller than two meters. It looks like 1.5 meters, actually. All right, uh, kerosene and more kerosene. Oh, is that that's that's not good. 
No, I want. Uh, okay, uh, was which one was this? Oh, I did put the eighty-nine. Okay, and that's probably a little bit tight for it, though. I really do want Mechjeb in here, uh, but yeah, let's let's not go whole hog just yet. I just want to see whether stuff works. Let's go all gray with it. Okay, that looks fine. Could be bad. Could be okay. Let's get some launch stability enhancers on and see if this works. Right, so this is test one. Okay, I'm gonna keep life support monitoring up just to make sure that that's okay. We didn't need antennas, but we do need the time warps to daylight, I think. Whoa, too fast. Ah, oh, darn, fuel ball blew, bled off. Well, actually, that, that, that so sort of demonstrates that uh, the engine igniter, well, I, I forget whether engine igniter is in charge of that. Let's revert flight to launch. Okay, uh, cancel this. All right, let's time warp from out here, safer that way. Okay, I guess we can go, whoa. But the hydrogen is starting out low. Why? I just brought it out to the launch pad. This is weird. Okay, let's just go with this. So we have a little bit less hydrogen. We are not uh, planning anything in particular with this flight except for testing that things work, so... We'll see. Now, we've got uh, one electric ignition showing here. And it's not ignited. Let's see if everything works out normally. Uh, yep, yeah, I think we're ready to go. Okay, it says very stable. Ignition off, auto-ignite, all this stuff related to engine igniter seems to be fine. Does, not saying local control here, that's a little bit weird. Let's check the outside map. We are launching from Cape Canaveral and we have a little dot that indicates that remote tech is properly configured to have this being a mission control station. That's good. Okay, let's uh, be careful now, but we can do a little bit of a gravity turn. Not gravity turn, pitch program. Not too much of a pitch program. We're not trying to make orbit here. I'm just trying to get to space. What? What shoot deployment? I didn't say anything about shoot deployment. Who said what? Huh. Okay, like, I yeah, I know shoot deployment is unsafe. Do I have to have this warning up here? Um... That's daily re-entry. Doesn't look like I can configure it here. What's this one? No. Well, if I'm gonna record videos, this is gonna be really annoying. Gonna have to figure out where I... Okay, well, I need to turn that off somehow, somewhere. Okay, and uh, for those watching uh, Realism overhaul for the first time. This is not how you normally launch a rocket here. I'm just doing a quick test here Okay, looks good G-force is getting pretty high here Actually, yeah, I'm gonna just shut down this engine. Oh, it's down Okay Going to separate but I'm not gonna ignite yet Hmm, yeah. I don't know if it's safe to wait until I'm going down to ignite that. Probably we'll just dump it. We're already going into space. But separation was clean. No problem there. If we had separation rockets, it'd look a little bit better. Gotta add clouds. Um, that obviously isn't... That isn't even in the realism overhaul thread. That's uh, environmental visual enhancements you're gonna have to pick up. 
or uh, or the development upon it. There is a uh, RSS visual enhancements uh, mod that is offered in the realism overhaul thread, but it's still in heavy development. Wow, that hydrogen just goes away real fast. Hmm. That's faster than I would think, given the kind of mission plans people talk about. Tanks should be able to deal with... I mean, well, no, this is a default tank, though. It's not a cryogenic tank. Maybe if I had a cryogenic tank, it'd be better off. Yeah, that's probably the thing. There's no torque in the pod or anything like that. I didn't put RCS... So we're just going to have to sit here until I can reactivate uh, until I can activate this engine if I get to. Otherwise, I'll just dump this whole stage and uh, come back down and hope we don't have horrible g-forces on the way. There's no throttling on the RL10 engine, so once it's on, gonna have to be judicious about it. This is pretty high too. I don't know if Jeb is gonna survive the g-forces. Be an interesting test, though. Don't need life support monitoring much. I want to see what Far has to say about all this. Oh, Reynolds number. Hey. Um, some of this is new. Flight data is what I want. What's Aeroviz? Ah. Huh. Oh. Okay. I'll plot those. Uh, I'll play around with those some other time. Right now, I just want to check that the drag on the pod is right. Okay, we're headed back down. The fuel flow still says very stable, which is contrary to my expectations, but uh, let's see if this is true. Okay, well, yeah, it lit. Very interesting. Um, I don't see any flame at all. Hear the sound. Could be that that's correct. I don't know, I've never seen an engine lit in space. It's doing its job slowing us down, making sure that the g-forces aren't going to be too high, nor the, nor the re-entry heat. Interesting sound. So I think I, I'll definitely want better textures on the Earth. It doesn't look all that great. Probably on the Moon and Mars as well. But I don't know how much space I have in the RAM. Probably should get some engines in first. Now I guess we're back to hitting the atmosphere around 130 kilometers. There we are. Drag is quite robust with this portion. You can sort of see why I wasn't too worried about having the liquid hydrogen boil off as much as it did and flying with that. Weird that there's no flame coming out or any sort of exhaust here. Don't know what that's about. Not even tempting re-entry heat here. What's our actual temperature? Uh, it's, it's going up sort of, but that's actually mostly the engine heat on that part. Here the, the temperature is fairly mild. Okay, shoot deployment unsafe. I believe it. I believe it. G-force is reasonable for this sort of thing, especially since we're running the engine. Ah, shoot deployment is safe before I would have even expected it. Okay, that's enough of the engine. And decouple. Ooh, 
knock that off a little bit. And since the shoot deployment unsafe is off already, let's just deploy shoot. Seems like a real shoot sort of thing. Does this patch look a little bit lighter to you than it should? Where, where are we? Seems like we should be in the middle of the Atlantic. This doesn't look like water. Or maybe this is just very shallow? Hmm. Okay, so initial tests seem to be okay. And so we've got a install of Realism Overhaul, but we're lacking certain things like engines. Mainly, mainly we're lacking engines. And uh, while he drifts down, let's just take a quick look. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, engines, mech jib, you guys tell me what else I should put in here and try out. Uh, only from that list, though. Let's not uh, go too far afield. I guess I could, I should try out uh, environmental visual enhancement. So, um, I'll call this a video. So this is going to be uh, episode 00A for installing Realism Overhaul. And so you saw how I did it, and uh, it looks like it works. So uh, you can follow those steps, and then uh, we'll we'll talk about installing additional mods in zero uh, zero B, let's say. And uh, it should be mods that I'm intending to use for the series. I'm gonna start a new Realism Overhaul series in KSP Beta, and so that's what we're talking about. The main debate is gonna be between installing the engines from like KW Rocketry, Nova Punch, and AIES Aerospace and installing the engines from the FASA mod. Uh, FASA is way big and it doesn't have much that I can dump. Well, I, mean, I guess I could dump out a few things, but it's, it's tough to fit into RAM space. Right now we're at uh, 2.6 gigabytes, just for reference, and the game will crash at 3.5. So gotta keep it tight on that. Now I know about OpenGL and uh, once we get uh, some more of the mods in and I upgrade the textures on Earth I will, because uh, we're just using the lowest grade textures right now so once I put in the higher grade textures for Earth in real solar system then then we'll have to see how much RAM space I have left and then I'll try OpenGL out in the episode 00B I'm sure I'm gonna have to try out the OpenGL fix and I'll show you how to do that if you don't know already and uh, that reduces some of the RAM usage but um, yeah I would only go to that if I needed to and we don't need to just yet so tell me what other mods you want me to try out with this since we now have a stable install of Realism Overhaul and let's just watch as Jeb drifts down safely after this initial flight. Parachute deployed. Definitely a real shoot parachute deployment there. Slowing us down to 6.2 meters per second. Let's come up a little bit. The only thing I haven't really tested is remote tech. Should have maybe done an unmanned probe first, but then I wouldn't have been able to test the G-forces properly. And, uh, yep, yeah, it looks fine. Now, is this land or water? It's, it's water. Just very shallow water, I guess. Huh. Alright, anyway. So, uh, there Jeb is. Let's just recover. Oh, okay. Well, that's a little bit of a problem, isn't it? Uh, come on, he's not even wiggling. This isn't, this isn't wiggling. SAS is on. Uh, unfortunately, because the pods don't have a torque anymore under Realism Overhaul, uh, it's really tough to recover the little guys. Uh, well, except in the tracking station. Let's do that. Let me just, no, I can't do that. Okay, let me just try and click on this as quickly as possible. Okay, there we go. <sighs> Can we have just a teensy little bit of torque in the pods? I mean, just a little bit, so that that doesn't have to happen. Okay, let's recover him now. No? Why can't we recover him? Oh? Oh, what happened to him? 
Um, astronaut complex. Jeb was killed in action. What the heck? Look, um, <clears throat> it seems that we have a problem here. Uh, huh. Well, uh, I, I will accept your input as to what happened to Jeb there. Splash down. Uh, it just wouldn't let me recover him. We went to the space center. We saw his little pod in the tracking station. The pod disappeared. It didn't let us recover him. Yeah, is that a new feature? Can we call that a feature? Um, yep, yeah. uh, if you guys know what happened there, please do tell me. Otherwise, uh, it's installed. <laughs> the Realism Overhaul is installed. It works, so hopefully you can follow the same steps to do it. And uh, if you have any other problems, please tell me. So, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please leave them in the comments section below. And I'll see you next time.